A portion of this video is sponsored by Adobe Premiere Pro. Hey, it's me. Today, I am very excited because I'm doing, I guess, a part two of a video that I did recently. Basically, I bought myself a bunch of mystery boxes because I like opening mystery boxes and I wanted an excuse to do it on camera. So I decided that I'm gonna get a bunch of mystery boxes, spend half the video opening them and goo goo gaga over them. Goo goo gaga. You know, oh, you know, Look what I got. It's a mystery. It's fun. Surprise. And then the other half of the video, I'll actually do something creative with one of the items in the mystery box. So the whole time I'm opening these, I'm thinking about which thing I can use. I'll paint on it. I'll customize it. I'll decorate it. I have to do something creative with one of these items. And I have no idea what they are. So it's kind of fun and interesting. Last time I did this, I opened the three smaller boxes that I bought. Today... I'm opening the big boy. Yes, it is in two separate packages, but this was technically one mystery box. Ugh. I'm a little ashamed to admit how much I spent on this box. I spent $128. Wow. This is double the price of the most expensive box that I opened last time. The last ones that I opened all had kind of like a cute theme. One was even customizable. This one is completely generic. There's no theme to it. It's just a big old mystery. I'm a little bit nervous, especially since I spent the most on this one. I did get all of these boxes from Etsy. The description for this one says, actual big box, guaranteed value, and fun. One out of seven will get a rare gold box. Okay. I I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming that's not me. No used trash. I sure hope there's no used trash. <laughs> You'll get an actual mystery box, not a mystery bag. I didn't know that there was discrimination against mystery bags. I'm so scared it's gonna be a bunch of cheap electronics that I'm gonna hate. Okay, box number one, let's go. Ooh, oh my gosh. Ah, ah. I just want to open my box. Come on. Muscle. Got the box open. Now let's see. Oh my gosh. What is this? <laughs> it looks like a cheap electronic that I hate. It seems as if you mount it and then there's wires. Technology is not exactly my thing. This looks like something that Jordan would like. My best guess is it's some sort of security camera. I'm not seeing many art possibilities with this. First item, it's all right, it's fine. What is this? A battery, a big fat battery. Oh boy. Is this for the camera? No, that's not, it would not fit in there. It's a big fat battery. Woo, yay. <laughs> this is what I always wanted. I didn't want a battery. Let's keep going. Oh, what? hey, I can connect with this. What is this? I don't even know what it is yet. <laughs> They're little strips of decorative paper you can use to make these little paper stars, which I've actually never made before. They're pretty cute. I doubt that I'll actually take the time to make the stars, but there could be another use for these. I do like the patterns and the colors on that, and so I can't complain about that one. Okay, what else? Wireless video doorbell. Somebody rings your doorbell and you can see them on video. It's good for security. Great, we already had that. I can't really use it for art either. So, okay, more technology. Cool. What's next? Oh my gosh, why is it all technology? What is this? It's a wire. I just want cute things. Digital indoor TV antenna. Opie, is that you? Opie? Are you in here? Why, hello, my little friend. I am opening things. Okay, cool. What does it do? Uh, <laughs> it's TV antenna. Something, something. Let's see what's next, okay? <laughs> What the heck is this? It's a wig. I'm really good with wigs, by the way. <laughs> it's a terrible wig for me because it kind of just looks like my my own hair. Kind of scared because it doesn't look new and that doesn't make me extremely comfortable. Okay, we have not run into any 
potential art projects. Um, ew, there's hair everywhere. I'm worried right now. What is this? HP Premium Plus Photo Paper. We actually just got a photo printer. Okay, cool. They definitely did not go out and shop for this. This looks like one of those things that you've had in your basement for like 20 years. You're like, oh, uh, what is this? Okay, I don't know what that, oh, well, hmm. That's what this is. What else? Okay. It's a child's backpack. Oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. <sighs> okay, yeah, that is a tiny bag. This is for like an infant. Can I use this? No, I'm not an infant. I don't know what to do with it. It's there. Oh boy, what is this? Sticky tablet holder stand. It looks like a toilet seat. Ugh, maybe somebody would be interested in using this. I don't think I would. Oh my gosh, the box is empty. <laughs> no! So far, it's been either a technology or something real random that just was dug out of somebody's garage. Nobody went out shopping for this. This came from somebody's basement. Same thing with that wig. I don't need to love everything. I'll be happy if I love one thing. Let's hope that this box is a little bit more up my alley. Hi. This portion of the video is sponsored by Adobe Premiere Pro. So many of you ask me, what do you use to edit your videos? Here's your answer. I've been using Premiere Pro to edit my videos for like six years at this point. It's how I do this and 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 this. I've tried multiple others, but Premiere Pro is my love. And clearly I'm not the only one because Premiere Pro is the top choice for social content creators and filmmakers. Some of my favorite things, the amazing color correction tools. I use the color correcting tools in every single video that I make to make sure that everything looks bright and it's all popping. Rainbow's always gotta be popping. There's also amazing and easy to use tools for editing audio to make sure that you have great sound for your videos. There's seamless integration with other Adobe products like Photoshop and After Effects. I spend a lot of time using Premiere because I gotta get these videos out every single week. So it is crucial that I have a reliable program to use where I can edit videos that I'm proud of and do it as efficiently as possible. Use the link in the description to try Premiere Pro now. Thanks to Adobe Premiere Pro for sponsoring that portion of the video. Okie dokie. It's another random backpack. Also for a child. What can you possibly put in there? Maybe a sock? It's kind of cute if I were a little boy who liked Angry Birds. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Crap, what is this? Oh no, it's wires. HDMI to CVBS. This is the crap that I go through the house and I find and I'm like, what is this used for? Can we get rid of it? Another fat battery, okay? What is this? Air mouse. Ew, it's so dusty and dirty. Ew, this has been used and it's dirty. Ew. Oh, we're in trouble. Universal bike mount holder. I'm not like a serious bicyclist or anything, but I do have a bike. It is pretty inconvenient to take your phone with you when you're riding a bike. I don't hate this. I might use this actually. What is this? Easy lifting moving straps. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. We're getting down to the bottom now. Chromecast. That's definitely used. I can't tell you what it does. I don't know what it does. Some dad with too many gadgets decided to put together a mystery box. And then we have a bunch of little things. Some ripped up post-its. Very clunky USB drive. Little green dragon. Seven day morning detox for weight loss. What are you trying to say? Clay bar for cleaning cars. Thank you for giving me the gift of chores. This is the last thing. <laughs> oh, it's more. Blah. I really feel like throwing up looking at this. It's just USB something something. I don't. What have I done? What? have I done? This is the mystery box life, right? You get the highs, you get the lows, you get the ones where it's like so perfect for you. And then you get the ones that are so far from anything you ever wanted. <laughs> 
it's a real low, especially considering the amount of money I spent on this. What the heck have I done? This was exactly what I was afraid of getting. All the technology and the gadgets, that is so far from what I'm interested in. And that's the majority of what this was. I was hoping for like more fun items. A clay bar for cleaning your car. I mean, I feel like if you want practical items, you're gonna buy practical items. So I feel like a mystery box should be more about like fun stuff. Anything that was fun was like strictly for children. So I got a real problem on my hands now because what in the world can I use here? What am I gonna do? Paint on lifting straps? I gotta choose something. After thinking about it and looking over everything, I think I really only have one option. The strips of paper. I feel like I can incorporate this into something. I just spent $128 on strips of paper. That's a wonderful feeling. I don't wanna be ungrateful. And I do realize that it's difficult to put together a generic mystery box that every human being on the planet is gonna enjoy. But I would have appreciated a little bit more variety. I think it was a little bit too heavy on technology and very masculine in a way. This was not my box. That being said, I'm gonna stop complaining now because I have some brainstorming to do. Let's get into that. All right, so here's what this video has come to. It's time for me to play with strips of paper. Of course, I realize that these are intended to be used to make those little paper stars, but I want to at least try to do something a little more creative. Although, don't get your hopes up, please, because disappointment, it's a bad feeling. Now that I've uh, removed all reason for you to continue watching this video, let's keep going. So I'm going to my drawer of paintable items to look for something, anything really. Well, here's something. Okay, that'll work. So this is a ceramic square plate. Very exciting. I bought this originally to try to hydro dip, you know, when that was a thing that I did that one time, but I didn't end up using it at that point, And here it is. Okay, we got to use these strips of paper on that. The best solution I could think of was to just cut all of these little strips into little squares and then just collect them in my little palette here. And then I'm just gonna continue doing that with the remaining colors. I think the white one is actually the cutest, but since I have no restraint whatsoever when it comes to choosing one color, I'm going to use literally every single one of the colors onto the yellow. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and now we're on to the blue. Isn't this fun, guys? Isn't this so fun and interesting? It is kind of mesmerizing to watch. It's like a machine or the never ending haircut. What? Okay, and finally, this is the home stretch. This is the last color that I gotta chop up. Here's my complete collection of paper scraps that I've created. This is what true talent and creativity looks like. So now I'm getting some Mod Podge, which hasn't been used in a while. So there was this lovely and very aesthetic little surprise. Also, it was very separated, so I had to stir that up vigorously. And here we go into the process, starting by applying a thick coat of Mod Podge to a section of the plate at a time, and then painstakingly sticking square by square onto the plate. So basically, decoupage. That's what we're doing here. This is not a technique or a style that I use often. In fact, I cannot remember the last time that I did this, but I mean, I guess it was kind of a fun process. It was mindless and easy, and it is moderate really satisfying to watch. I definitely would have preferred to have gotten an item that I could have painted on. This was me trying to make the best of my situation. If you're wondering about the fate of all of the items that I got in this box, I ended up giving away most of it. If you saw my last mystery box unboxing video, I got a couple things that time too that I didn't know what to do with. I actually ended up mailing that pickle plate to one of my viewers. She messaged me and said she really loved it and was a collector of pickle themed items. There was a happy ending for that plate. No harm, no foul, no waste, except for my money, of course. That's not coming back, but that's okay. It's all for the cause for your entertainment. We have the top portion completed. I am going to fill in the bottom of it up to that rim because you can still kind of see the sides a little bit when this thing is set down since they do flare up. Before I actually got very far into this process, my plan was to just use this technique for the background and then paint something on top of the deck 
decoupage in order to customize it a little bit more. But the further I got along, the more I realized that this was just looking incredibly busy as it is. I was just having a hard time picturing any kind of design that would look good with this busy of a pattern in the background. So basically my dreams were just falling apart here. It may have been a better option to just stick with using one of the colors of paper instead of using all of them. But of course I didn't do that. It would be really helpful to learn how to see the future. And this is the last piece. Mwah finished. So putting a nice thick coat of protection over the entire thing. We don't want to get any nasty edges coming up later. And here is the final result. To me, it looks kind of like a crappy 4th of July decoration plate, but I really felt that trying to add anything additional to this was just going to make it worse. It's so busy, it's even hard to find things that look cute in it. Like that's just too much going on. It kind of looks nice when I put my nail polish in it, but yeah, you know, I'm not going to lie. I am not over excited about this one. It did not feed my creativity. Maybe I'll give this one away too. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really want it. I know we had kind of a less than ideal experience this time. I do hope you enjoyed the video regardless. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!